I'd been here before, this warehouse lit dimmer than a stool of pigeon's conscience. I cased the joint, looking to talk to a dame about a three ounce bottle of top shelf hooch. But she was otherwise occupied, so I waited. I wondered why people wore overcoats when it was 96 degrees and big heavy hats. I also wondered when the last time the trash was emptied, it smelled pretty bad, suffocating really. I couldn't tell if that hard boiled fella shuffling by was a fuddy duddy or a G man, but I had the lettuce and I wasn't about to leave with bupkis. This job was above my pay grade, but I hid patiently for my moment. And there it was, a swanky treat that would bring pennies from heaven. So, you're looking for some shady inks, huh? Wait, not shady, shading. I'm sorry. And how am I gonna show you the inks when I'm in black and white anyway? Oh man, let me fix this. All right. Mm. Shading inks is what I'm actually talking about today. And what is shading? Shading is actually something that I think is one of the best aspects of using fountain pens. A lot of people when they first get into fountain pens don't really know what's happening when they're seeing this characteristic in their ink because it's not something that you get with ballpoints, rollerballs, or pencils. Those are all very just kind of monotone. It's just the line you put down is just flat and very kind of consistent looking. With fountain pens though, you have this characteristic called shading, which has to do with a variation in the saturation of the ink as you're writing your line. And it has to do with the fact that fountain pen ink is liquid. It's made of water and dye. And what's happening is as you're writing, the different amounts of writing pressure in different parts of the letter where ink pools up more, it gets a little bit darker. So in the parts that you're writing faster and don't have as much ink that you're putting down, it looks lighter. And in the part where it pools up, it looks a lot darker. And that variation between the light and the dark in your writing line is called shading. So it's something that uh, once you are into fountain pens and you really kind of get over the initial like weirdness factor of what, what is actually happening on the paper, it's actually something that you kind of, kind of learn to love and is, is one of the more appealing aspects of the fountain pen hobby. Now there are some aspects to uh, your ink and paper choices that can affect how much shading you're getting, even with the inks that I'm about to mention to you here today. In particular, you want to try to use pens that are very wet writing, especially with broader nib sizes, maybe an italic nib or even a flex pen. That's when you really start to see the shading most. Basically, the more ink you put down, the more shading you're likely to see. Also, the paper is a huge factor. Don't overlook the paper. If you have an absorbent paper, it's gonna soak it all in, make your ink look very flat, and you're not gonna see a lot of color variation, even with some of the best shading inks out there. So you're gonna wanna go with a paper that is very ink resistant, something like a Rhodia or a Clairefontaine or a nice laser jet paper, not an inkjet paper, something that the ink resistance is very high. The dry time is going to be a little bit longer, but you're going to get a lot of pooling and you're going to see that shading really come out once that ink dries. And then lastly, the thing I wanted to say before I get all into my choices here is that I have a firm distinction between shading inks and sheening inks. I'm not talking about inks with sparkle and glitter and that kind of stuff in it. There's some inks that you may be kind of shocked I don't have on this list, but they might be what I would consider to be sheening inks, and perhaps I'll do that in kind of a separate thing. These are inks that purely have that variation between light and dark, which I define as shading. So let's get into it. The first one that I want to say, and this is not necessarily in any like rank order per se, but by and large, when I think of an ink that shades well, and if you've been watching my videos before, you know exactly what I'm going to talk about, is Noodler's Apache Sunset. This ink is just phenomenal. It's There's no other ink that compares to the shading that you get with Apache Sunset. Part of it is it's just right and it's this nice kind of vein, this color vein that a lot of inks in this color range tend to shade really well. But this ink in particular really gets a lot of variation, not only between light and dark, but it can go in the range of a yellow to more of an orange, to almost to a deep red as you're really pulling it up on the page. So it's really fun ink to use. I use in a lot of different pens. And even if you aren't as crazy about this particular shade of color, I think you're going to love it just for the craziness that you see 
with the variation in its shading. Apache Sunset's very popular ink from Noodlers. It's available in a three ounce bottle, which is about 90 milliliters. It's a really good amount of ink. It's gonna last you a long time, even in your wettest flex pens that you've got. And it's $12.50, which is really a pretty good value, especially for this much ink. Another phenomenal shading ink coming from Noodlers is Noodlers Black Swan in Australian Roses. This has been a favorite for years. It's had a little bit of drama lately because there's been some color variation in some of the more recent batches that have come out. There's been a little bit of controversy as to exactly why that's happened. I've talked to Nathan, Nathan Tardif, the founder of Noodlers. He hasn't formulated or changed anything. Apparently there was some variation in some of the raw dye components he was getting in these. So it did kind of shift to more of a purple. Now it's shifted back to its original color of uh, kind of a true burgundy. But it's a burgundy that as it shades, it really kind of turns to more of a black. And the cool thing about this is that it's partially bulletproof, meaning that the black component in the ink is actually permanent and will not wash away. The maroon or the burgundy part will, but the black part will not. So he calls it partially bulletproof, so it makes it great if you wanna sign it for checks or have any kind of fraud resistant properties to it, that black part of the ink will stay put. Kind of cool, not something you see in a lot of good shading inks. Being a Noodler's ink, it's available in a three ounce bottle that you typically see for $12.50. Diamine Marine is an ink that has been a favorite of mine uh, ever since my earliest days of using fountain pens. It was one of the first turquoises that I ever stumbled upon, and maybe it's a sentimental thing for me uh, just because it is one of my first inks that I truly fell in love with. It's not one that I use all the time, uh, to be quite honest with you, uh, but I really just love this. There's uh, so many good turquoises, especially ones that shade well. I've got several in this list here today, but uh, this one is really kind of a unique shade. It's a nice balance between a blue and a green. A lot of turquoises can really swing kind of between those two colors. Uh, but this one in particular is just, uh, there's really not much to say. It doesn't have any particular special qualities. It does shade really nicely, but just the particular shade that this one is, is one of my favorites. And it's available in an 80 milliliter bottle for $14.95. This next ink that I have is Noodler's Navajo Turquoise. This is another turquoise, but this is really more of a blue. It's almost kind of more of a true blue. It's called a turquoise, but there's really not a lot of green happening in this ink. This one is a really good shader. Uh, doesn't have any crazy properties, no permanence or anything like that. Uh, but this one definitely is one of my favorites as well. I found it pretty early on, especially when I started to get into Noodler's inks. And I really latched onto it and I just haven't found a lot of other blues that shade as well uh, and that I really like as much as this particular one. It's available in a three ounce bottle for $12.50. All right, don't get mad at me for having yet another Noodlers ink on this list. It's just, uh, honest to goodness, there just happens to be a lot of good shading Noodlers inks. I really am not trying to push Noodlers here, but this one just uh, kind of falls in line with some of the other ones, Noodlers Golden Brown. Again, this one is one where there's a lot of good shading inks in this color range, but the Golden Brown is really kind of a sepia color. So it ranges from like a yellow to a brown, and especially with the Noodlers Golden Brown, it's actually got a little bit of a hint of red to it, which is kind of unique for these, this like Golden Brown range uh, of ink. So I really like it, very intense kind of shading going on. It's really hit or miss as to people, whether people actually like this ink or not. But what I find it works best for is if you're writing on ivory paper and you want kind of that old timey kind of look, really kind of fits in with that like Wild West kind of feel uh, to it. It's a, available in a three ounce bottle and it's $12.50. The next ink comes all the way from Germany. This is a Diatramentus Mint Turquoise. Yes, I know I've got three tur turquoises in this list, but like I mentioned, turquoise can really range in color, and this one definitely swings heavy on the green side, and it's much darker than the other ones that I've already mentioned. And this one in particular is actually my wife Rachel's favorite ink, and it's a really good shader. So it's a 35 milliliter bottle, which is a little more expensive at $12.95, but really nice ink, I think you would enjoy this one. And the last one that I've got on this list 
was really just, I mean, I could have made this a list of 35, to be honest with you. We just kind of cut it off at seven. There's so many good shading inks out there, but I like this last one because it's one that you probably wouldn't expect. Noodler's Lexington Gray. It's a dark gray, and usually grays and blacks and these darker colors don't shade well at all. But Lexington Gray actually has some pretty surprising amount of shading, not only because it's a dark gray, but also because it's a fully bulletproof ink. So it's got a lot of permanent quality qualities to it, very water resistant. So you get that aspect to it as well. And it's just a really great color, especially if you're looking for a much more interesting alternative to just your typical black, but you're not trying to stand out too much with your writing. Lexington Gray is a fantastic alternative. And this one is actually available in a three ounce or a four and a half ounce bottle, which comes with a free Noodler's pen. So if you are just getting into the fountain pen hobby, for $18, you can get a four and a half ounce bottle of ink, which is a ton of ink with a free pen. It's pretty cool. But if you like the three ounce bottle, it's $12.50, just like all of the other Noodler's inks. All right, so that's my list of my top seven favorite shading fountain pen inks. I would be perfectly happy if you just got on the blog or got on YouTube and just lit me up and said, you made terrible choices. These are the best ones, because I would probably agree with you. Honestly, there are so many good shading inks out there. These are the ones that are kind of nearest and dearest to my heart. And I talked with my team a lot. I consulted my media team and customer care and said, hey, what are some of the best ones? What are some of your favorites? And we all kind of talked about it. We tried to get a good range of colors. Um, you know, there were ones like we were trying to find a good red. Oh, that was really tough. You know, there were other ones where it was like, oh, that's really more of a sheening one. That's not honest. So we had a lot of debate about it, so I'd love to keep that debate going on. Please, I encourage you to comment, you know, share on Twitter, Facebook, all that stuff. We want to elicit a lot of good conversation about it. So I'd be more than happy if you disagree with me. That would be perfectly fine. Um, I will say that there's definitely like good groupings of good shading inks. It would seem that like certain dye colors are more conducive to shading really well. In particular, as you've got oranges or ones that are kind of in that orangey, like coppery kind of color. Um, definitely like golden browns tend to do really well. Um, burgundies as well, like anything from the burgundy purple wine type colors. Um really shade nicely. Uh, and turquoises, oh my gosh. Turquoises was the hardest to try to choose from. That's why I ended up choosing three of them for this list, because there's just so many of them are good. I mean, almost every turquoise shades really well. So I had to like really restrain myself to not mention like 10 other colors for each of these ones that we went with. But this is not an exhaustive list, just some of my top seven favorites. So if you got any comments, be sure to leave them. If you like this video and you want more like it, be sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel. You can check out all of these in bottle or or in ink sample form on gouletpens.com, so be sure to check that out. Thanks so much for watching, and right on.